Good afternoon. So good to see everybody here today. What a blessing as we get together, worship our Lord God together in Jesus' name. We welcome also our guests and visitors. It's good to have you with us. If you'd like to know more about St. John's and the Word of God that we teach and preach, please be sure to get a hold of us. We are here to serve. Since this is the worship service that also goes out online and elsewhere, we welcome those worshipers, and we also thank those people for making it happen. Today, we continue our overall theme, His Final Steps. And today, we follow His Final Steps that led to His Father's house. Let's sing the opening hymn, hymn number 515, Christ is the World's Light. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we go to our Lord and confess our sins together. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. Jesus says to his people, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. Do you believe this? Yes, I Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. He sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Together we sing Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord. pray. God, our Father, we praise your name for the marvelous universe you have created, and we pray for humility to understand our role in it. Show us that your Son is the only man who can rule this world with true wisdom and power. Give us full confidence that all things are under the control of Christ, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues as grades two through four sing, Lord, let me walk. You'll find the words if you'd like to follow along with the children. The words are in the worship folder. Let me walk.
The Passion History of Our Lord this year is enjoyed by us through a video format, and so we show the Passion History video number two. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth. Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. My father! If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. <sighs> then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. went away a second time and prayed. <laughs> oh. 
my father. <laughs> if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, or your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us go. We invite you to fill out one of the white attendance guest cards that you find in front of you, and you can return it by placing it in one of the offering baskets as they go around after the sermon. This helps us to serve everyone better and to get to know all of you better, also to encourage God's people in their worship life. Let's continue as we sing hymn number 402, Glory Be to Jesus. <laughs> our study of God's Word lead us to a greater appreciation of this, worship. 
in God's house. Dear Christian friends, the portion of God's Word that serves as the sermon text is taken from Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse 12. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all those who were selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the experts in the law saw the wonders he performed and heard the children calling out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. They said to him, Do you hear what they are saying? Yes, Jesus told them. Have you never read? From the lips of little children and nursing babies you have prepared praise. He left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. This is God's holy word. You may remember when Jesus was 12 years old, he made a trip with Mary and Joseph to Jerusalem, a trip that was probably a five-day journey from Nazareth to Jerusalem. It was for the Passover. It's really the only event that we have recorded in Scripture of that early childhood. But 12 years old, he made this trip, and you can almost picture him as he's coming to Jerusalem, and he sees the holy city, and then he sees the temple, that place where God's people come together and they worship the Lord God. His heart must have skipped a beat thinking about people worshiping him, the Lord God. Remember also that after the Passover, they left in order to journey back to Nazareth. After about a day, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus wasn't with them or the company. You see, they traveled as a company with other people, and so they thought that Jesus was in there somewhere. But after a day, they realized, no, he's not with the company we got to go back. we got to find him. After a three-day search, they found him. It says in the Scriptures, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And this is the way that Jesus responded to Mary and Joseph. I must be taking care of my father's business. He was where he should be, in the temple, in his father's house, teaching and learning. That's where he was to be. He had zeal, as the Bible says, for his father's house. Now let's fast forward to when he's 30 years old. He's beginning his ministry. And it's just after he performed his first miracle. Remember the miracle changing water into wine. Then he made a trip to his father's house, to the temple. It was also the Passover. What did he find? He found a mess. It was a mess. This is how it's described. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle sheep and doves and money changers sitting at tables. He made a whip of cords and drove everyone out of the temple courts along with the sheep and oxen. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those selling doves, he said, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a place of business. You see, that was the first cleansing of the temple. There were two cleansings recorded in Scripture. This one was at the beginning of his ministry, right after that first miracle. The one that is recorded in our text for today is the second one. And so now we fast forward again, and we go to Palm Sunday, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, and then on Monday... He goes to the temple. And what does he find? 
he finds it quite a mess again, full of merchants that are making money for themselves, full of greed and selfishness, deceit, thievery, and more. And just imagine what that did to Jesus. This was Father's house, a place of worship where God's people are to pray. They're to praise. They're to worship. And so this is what it says about this second cleansing of the temple. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all those who were selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He said to them, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. It was full of corrupt merchants who were selling in order to make money for themselves. There was a lot of greed that was going on, and they were using the temple courts for it. Why the temple courts? This place where all the merchants were, were buying and selling, exchanging money, is really where the Gentiles would worship and pray. Can you imagine what it must have been like trying to worship and pray in those courts, in the courtyard there? Couldn't even hear themselves think, I'm sure, with all of the haggling that was going on and all of the bargaining that was happening. And then... All of the animals that were in there as well. You see, people were selling them for an exorbitant price so that people would have animals for the sacrifices. But it was kind of a monopoly because they were charging what they wanted to charge and it was way above what it should be. So picture that, all these animals around and how, how you had to be careful that you didn't step on something that they left behind. And then the smell must have been a terrible smell. But the worst smell really would be that of the chief priests and Pharisees who allowed this to go on. They probably allowed it to go on because they were making something out of it. They were getting their cut. Then there were the money changers, you know, changing from one currency to another and charging for it. It was full of selfishness. And this is what Jesus came upon and needed a cleansing, right? As he was zealous for his father's house, as the Bible says. How low did the people go? How low had they sunk? Taking such a place of worship and making it into a place where they made money. We want to be very careful that we aren't self-righteous Pharisees thinking that we're better because we all are sinful and we are greedy at times. Maybe there are times when our money is lost in one way or another and we become upset, we become worried, we become we. We become maybe discontent instead of content as God wants us to be. Maybe people have hurt us and we are angry at them. We might think of other times when we've been selfish, when we've thought about ourselves. And we realize later on that we should have been thinking about the other person. No, there's a lot of that that goes on within each one of us because we are all sinful by nature and we sin every single day. Many times when we become discontent because we want more, we look at what other people have and we think, I want some of that. Sometimes we go so far as to be deceitful in order to get it. We can apply God's commandments to us and we come to realize our sin. And Let's just take a moment to think about that. Just a quiet, silent moment to think about our sins that we commit to God. And we confess them to our Lord God. You know what God says? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, purifies us from all sin. 
all those sins nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ, all of those sins washed away by the blood of Jesus as he shed his blood and gave up his body on the cross. We come to this place, the Father's house worn and torn. Sometimes we're dragging ourselves in because we are so hurt by whatever it might be, and we need to hear the comfort that God gives, the healing of our sins, and the comfort only He can give. And so we, we follow Jesus, His final steps to His Father's house, and we see that He cleansed that temple. We see that that is a house, a house that is intended for healing. That's right, healing. You've come here for healing. As you've come here confessing your sins, God tells you he has healed you of that as he sacrificed himself on the cross. And that's brought out in our text, really, in this way. It says in verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. So after our Savior cleansed the temple, now it was ready for the proper use, and that is to help people who are hurting, to help people who are overwhelmed and burdened by their guilt to hear the wonderful message, the gospel of salvation, forgiveness through Christ, and also to be healed, as many of them were. We might be tempted to run right over that statement about Jesus' healing because he healed so many times, numerous times. You might think this to be routine, but none of his miracles were routine. None of his miracles were routine to the people that he healed and the families that were blessed because of those healings. Think about that. You have a relative who is unable to walk, and now he can walk. Unable to see, but now can see, dead, but now alive. As it says, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. This all was according to God's plan. These miracles pointed out Jesus as God himself able to pay for the sins of the whole world. As Jesus did these miracles, though, people who were his enemies, people who did not believe, became all the more upset and wanting to put him to death and to kill him. And this was all according to plan. Because the Lord was going on his way now to the cross to suffer and die there. And the enemies... It was their responsibility, their sin against God, but God used it as he took him to the cross and nailed him there. When the chief priests and the experts in the law saw the wonders, the miracles that Jesus performed, they were indignant. But Jesus didn't shy away from helping. He didn't shy away from doing those miracles. He continued to help those in need. But this was yet another straw that would break the camel's back. Another miracle that would make them all the more want to kill him and put him to death. But Jesus couldn't shy away from giving his help, and so he healed. This this Father's house, and this Father's house is a place intended for healing. Father's house is also intended for praise. And that's brought out in our text as well. You know, as Jesus performed these miracles, it was like a massive billboard that was announcing Jesus as God. Billboard for all to see like a neon sign pointing out Jesus as true God and also calling people to him. As Jesus was in the temple after his cleansing, then children came to him. Children gathered around him. Children praised him. And what did they say? Hosanna to the son of David. You recognize those words? The day before, Palm Sunday, 
That's what the crowds were crying out. Hosanna to the son of David. What does that mean? Save us, Lord. Save us, God. The son of David, that's referring to the Old Testament and the promise of the Savior. The Messiah to come. The children were identifying Jesus as the son of God. The one who had been promised that he's here. Hosanna to the son of David. And the chief, oh, it made the chief priests, made those teachers of the law who hated Jesus, hate him all the more. They just wanted to kill him. Chief priests, they didn't like it then on Palm Sunday, and they didn't like hearing it now here in the temple. They knew what the children were saying. They knew what it meant. They were indignant. They said to Jesus, do you hear what they are saying? Yes, Jesus told them. Have you never read? From the lips of little children and nursing babies, you have prepared praise. You hear that little sarcasm that Jesus pointed at those chief priests and teachers of the law? Have you never read? <laughs> Many of them had memorized the Old Testament. Of course they read it, but they didn't read it. You know what I'm talking about by that. They read it, but they didn't care about it. They read it with their lips and with their mind, but they didn't care about it with their heart. They read it, but they didn't read it. Have you never read? And then he points out how important it is for people to praise the Lord. And so that's what we do. They had forgotten what the Father's house is meant for. It's meant for prayer. It's meant for praise. It's meant for hearing the Word of God. It's meant for healing. It's meant for praise by God's people, by the children as we heard today, for them to be regularly in worship, by the young adults, by the teenagers, by the adults, by the older adults, the middle-aged adults, by, by the elderly, by God's people. It's meant to praise the Lord God Almighty. And we praise Him. Why? Why? Because He made those steps, those final steps for us. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we sing, In peace, Lord, you let your servant depart. be seated. As the offering plates come around, be sure to place your attendance guest card in one of them. And those who are worshiping online can use the QR code or the link that is provided. And as the offering baskets are brought forward, we dedicate all the offerings to the Lord. Those that are given here, those given online, those dropped off, we do that out of love for our Lord who loved us first. Let's sing the next hymn, Not All the Blood of Beasts. Him number 398.
go to our Lord in prayer using the response of prayer that you'll find on the big screens. We pray. Heavenly Father, you loved the world and gave your Son to free us from sin and death by his obedient death on the cross. Lord of the church, we thank you for the treasure of the gospel. By your Spirit, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Guard and guide those who carry a cross in the name of Christ and face ridicule and persecution for the sake of the kingdom. Missionaries and chaplains, young people who stand up for what is right in the face of pressure to do what is wrong, and all who pay a high price for their faith and values as Christians. Keep in your care those who carry heavy burdens in life, the sick and the chronically ill, the depressed and the lonely, those torn by conflict in personal relationships, and those victimized by war and injustice. Comfort all who face the terrors of life with a heavy heart. Help us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Keep us faithful even to the point of death that we may receive the crown of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Please be seated. Our children will close our worship service by singing, Now the Light Has Gone Away. You can find it in the blue hymnal if you'd like to follow along, hymn number 784. And some of those classes use it regularly at the close of their school day. It's a beautiful song with much meaning. Now the Light Has Gone Away. prayer to end our worship with. Thank you again.
You can smell it. It's a delicious meal downstairs. The Girl Pioneers are hosting it. It's, a, it's an act of service and love as we have the opportunity to, to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and to enjoy a good meal. I believe that they're serving tacos and that's down in the lower level of the church right away. I'm sure they're ready to go for you. A delicious meal planned. I hope many of you take advantage of it. Tomorrow night, the ladies' night out uh, will take place at 6.30, and it'll be in the lower level, unless you hear something different as far as the snow, you know. Uh, I'll announce it as happening, but uh, you'll find out if it doesn't. Saturday, before you go to bed, be sure to set your clocks ahead. It's kind of a crucial one, uh, and so be sure to do that. And as we think about the uh, meal downstairs, we're going to have our table prayers. By the way, if uh, you don't need the bulletin or the worship folder, you can put it back to be used for the uh, later service at 7 o'clock. So good to see all of you. God's blessings. Let's pray. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts of us be blessed. Oh, we thank the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy. God bless.